I only skimmed the surface on her shells, and that's what we're going to be talking about today in this episode of Tanks Explained. Hish in depth. Hi, I'm Enigma, and today we're going to be doing a deep dive into these shells, where we just dipped the tips of our toes before. I received a couple of comments on my Hesh vs HE video before, as I only made a passing remark about the downsides of Hesh, since I was only doing a comparison video between the HE and the Hesh. But, since I missed it last time, let's go look at the downsides into Hesh. For Hesh to be an effective anti-tank shell, it needs to actually make physical contact with the main armour, and and then squish up against it. However, there are many ways to stop this from happening. As I briefly mentioned in the last video, ERA, explosive reactive armor, can have a detrimental effect on Hesh as it is not able to contact the main armor. But there is actually an exhaustive list of things that can. Spaced armor is a type of armor that comprises of another plate offset from the main armor, which makes the shell hit the generally thinner spaced armor before it hits the main armor. With solid shot AP, it will typically cause the shell to do a multitude of things, either deforming the shell so it doesn't have the best profile to hit the armor with, disintegrating, generally being the best armor, it would destroy the shell before it had the chance to do damage, turning it into an ineffectual spray of confetti. It would do damage if you were infantry standing around it though, eh, but that's infantry. Also, if the spaced armor is sloped, the shell will denormalize, and going through the spaced armor will both reduce the energy of the shell, thus reducing penetration of the round, and it will also then change the path of the shell, either deflecting it or tumbling it. Typically, what it would do to the Hesh round would be a pre-detonation of the shell as it hits the spaced armor, then squish, and then fuse against the plate. Since spaced armor is generally thinner, it will produce less spool, and it will also have to travel to the armor, once again becoming ineffectual metallic confetti. Slat armor generally works the same way as spaced armor, but instead of being a solid plate, it generally takes the form of your typical neighbor's garden fence gate, with multiple bars in a frame placed across the desired area. Those bars are placed closely enough that nothing can pass through the gaps that you want to, that it doesn't require as much material as a full plate, meaning it is lighter and cheaper. Composites are another can of worms that can generally be used to stop hesh rounds. It would do this by using the multiple layers of materials inside the armor. This is because a composite armor system contains a mix of materials such as other metals, rubber, plastics, air, sometimes quartz, even cans of worms. These are designed to disrupt the chemically charged rounds such as high explosive anti-tank or high explosive squash shell. Hesh. By the same principle as spaced armor works, it makes it not touch the main armor of the tank, but composite armor generally adds more material between the two plates, so it will absorb the spulb before it gets to the main armor, and also just dissipate the energy of the shockwave, as if it was just a solid piece of metal, it would A, be heavier, and B, also have a chance to send a shockwave that a Hesh round generally makes through the armor anyway. ERA, or Explosive Reactive Armor, is a type of armor that packs a small amount of explosives sandwiched between two metal plates in tiles dotted around or completely covering the tank. We've seen this in the Russian invasion of Ukraine, where both sides generally have been putting plates of ERA on literally anything, because on some things it could generally give armor, like on softer targets like you're seeing on screen now, it generally doesn't make sense because ERA has to push off something, as I'll get into soon, to actually detonate. So what you're really doing is strapping a bunch of explosives to your truck and hoping it gives you more penetration. Yeah, not a good idea. When an ERA tile is hit by something with enough energy, like a Hesh shell, the plate squishes it against the explosive and makes the explosive inside the ERA tile detonate. This propels one of the metal plates that are sandwiched around the explosive into the projectile and tries to parry the projectile. In more technical terms, it aims to deflect, pre-detonate, or otherwise destroy the projectile. This also applies to any other type of armor that prevents the shell from contacting the main armor, as a Hesh round relies on hitting the primary part of the target and spalling only the first layer of armor it can hit. But there are also other ways. Some 
more sane than others. As a hesh round doesn't have penetration and just tries to spoil the first layer of armour it can hit, but there are many other ways. Even the relatively cheap, steeply sloped armour can be effective against hesh, as the shell normalises to the armour's slope. If you'd like to look at this masterpiece of a diagram, you can see that this causes the spooling to occur perpendicular to the armour plate. If the slope is steep enough, the shell might overnormalize and directing the shell almost directly down, potentially away from critical internal components. The last common way to stop hash rounds is an active protection system that could have a chance to detect shells and destroy them before making contact with the tank. A special one that I found on a random website said that a depleted uranium armor scheme would also provide against Hesh rounds, as the extremely dense armor would be effective against the shell. But do you really want to be in the depleted uranium bathtub of a tank? It's still mildly radioactive. In summary, to counter a Hesh shell, there are a couple of methods, mainly focusing on stopping the shell from detonating on the armor of the tank, intercepting the shell in flight, or making the armor strong enough to resist the shockwave. Time for a bit of an interlude before we get to the history of the shell. Only 6% of people who watch my content are actually subscribed, and statistically that means you're not subscribed, so make sure to subscribe before this gets complicated. On to the rest of the video. Now, despite the YouTube comment section, Hesh was designed to destroy bunkers, specifically as the designer Dennis Tun Burney, I, am, I don't think I pronounced that one right, who himself has a fascinating invention history, with a fascination into recoilless weaponry, including the Ordnance RCL 3.45 inch, or for short, the Burney gun, which was a recoilless rifle designed to launch a specialized shell that was being developed for anti-fortification munition for use against concrete. That little fletchling shell was called a high explosive squash head. The shell was designed too late to see real use in the Second World War, but it proved popular in the British Army. Unlike Bernie's other recoilless design, a recoilless shotgun that was designed to make shotgun usage easier. However, the shotgun didn't go far. Hish was adopted due to its effective multi-role capabilities as it was found in trials that it was also effective in anti-tank purposes as well as its original anti-bunker and fortification roles. This meant that they could carry fewer different types of shells, merging demolition and anti-tank shells into one. Finally, it was also found that it performed quite well and better than conventional rounds at longer distances. For the time period where it was first adopted, being the 40s until around the 60s, it was an effective anti-tank round until it was then effectively neutralized by spaced and ERA armor. Rule Britannia, Britannia rules the waves. During more modern times, the Hesh shell has been basically mitigated by all tanks. However, the United Kingdom has carried the shell further than its effective lifespan. This is for a multitude of reasons mainly. Budgetary and doctrine. First, let's start with the second, doctrine. Doctrine-wise, during the Cold War, Britain had concluded that most battles wouldn't be fought against other tanks, i.e. a pair conflict, and if there were enemy tanks, they would be of an older and cheaper variety that may not have the fancier armor designed to counter Hesh and other rounds. This proved correct for a majority of cases that Britain was deployed against, mainly facing fortifications, older Soviet tanks, and soft targets like technicals. Facing these threats, it would be counterintuitive to run high-performance APFSDS armor-piercing rounds, primarily since it wouldn't be as effective. Now, for what I consider to be the main reason, that budgetary side, there is a trend in the aisles of creating money black holes, such as the £1.7 billion Stonehenge road tunnel that was cancelled in 2024. Well, let's get back to the topic and uh, not my rants on government ineptitude. Running an already existing shell that works good enough in most roles it can face on the battlefield. However, it does come at a long-term cost, such as the fact that the use of Hesh caused British MBTs until very recently with the Challenger 3 to have rifled barrels. These are detrimental for the armor piercing rounds, such as fin stabilized rounds, such as APFSDs and heat FS. As the spin imparted on the barrel may be helpful for hash rounds, it's detrimental to fin stabilized rounds as it tends to make them tumble in air and lose speed and armor penetration. Hi, post-production enigma here. 
Tumbling does a little bit more than that. Namely, the unstable flight causes significant accuracy issues. This is because the APFSD start does not fly straight when tumbling, causing the shell to tilt and have uneven drag. This can cause the dart to turn in flight or even rotate in flight, meaning that the dart could impact the target on its side or just generally not an optimum angle, either shattering or just bouncing off. My last sort of conspiracy that I have developed in my head while making this video that I have no source on, but however, I think it's credible enough to mention. The United Kingdom, but more especially England, has a very want to be independent in every possible way from the European continent. See for more further reading, Brexit. My point is that the good smoothbore cannons in the space at the moment are the German Rheinmetall ones, and England is trying to hold on to their independent former the sun never sets on the British Empire sort of glory, that they're failing to do so at the expense of proper reason. Hi again, post-production enigma again. What I meant to say here was that England would rather hold on to their waning empire than buy a better product from overseas and accept defeat. At the end of the day, England's push for independence could very well be clouding their better judgment, prioritizing symbolism over result. Whether or not this is true, it's an interesting thought to pursue for another day. While Hirsch rounds were effective for anti-tank and anti-fortification rounds with their initial debut and was a key asset in British military doctrine, it began to fail against more modern armour technologies such as ERA and spaced armour, where rounds like APFSDS are a far better solution. The shell these days is kept in use by mainly larger aspects being doctrine and budget, while it could also have been kept around for the nostalgia of fading global hegemony. Do you think that Hirsch will ever make a comeback? Or has it been replaced for good by much more modern shells? What do you think future trends of anti-tank and anti-fortifications could be? Hesh has made an enduring legacy for itself, keeping itself around for better or worse, maybe like a bad smell, but we'll see in the future. Thanks for watching, remember to like and subscribe for more content, and I'm going to have a poll up for future videos when this video drops, so make sure to look for that. Bye! Also sources in the description.